Hello. This video is a follow on from a previous video where we looked at how to partition variance for analysis of variance or ANOVA. What we're going to look at in this video is how we can use that partition variance to derive an ANOVA table and we can then use that to carry out hypothesis tests on whether or not we have differences between the means in our data set. Just to have a quick recap, when we have groups in our data, then we can partition the variance into the variance that's explained by the structure in the data and the variance that isn't. The total variance that we have can be divided into the variance that we can explain by the differences between the means of our groups. That's called the treatment variance here. You'll sometimes also hear it called the factor variance. And then the other component of variance is the variance that we're unable to explain. And that's called the error variance or sometimes the residual variance. When we calculate these, when we partition these variances and do the calculations for it, we tend to work with something called sums of squares. And the reason we use the sums of squares rather than calculating variance immediately is that the sums of squares are additive. So if we know the total sum of squares, the sum of squares for the entire data set, and we know the error sum of squares, we can then find out the treatment sum of squares by subtracting the error sum of squares from the total sum of squares. Alternatively, if we know the treatment sum of squares, we can find out the error sum of squares in the same way. The sums of squares are calculated by calculating either an overall mean or a mean for each group, and then subtracting that mean from each data point, squaring the result, and then adding all of those squared values together, hence sums of squares. Here are the data that we looked at in the previous video. We've got three groups, which we're just calling A, B, and C. We have eight data points in each of those groups. So we have a total sample size of 24. If we want to calculate the total sum of squares, we calculate the overall mean for all the data, and then we subtract that value from each data point in the data set, square the result of each subtraction, and then add them all together. And if we do that, that gives us a total sum of squares of 309.44. If we want to calculate the error sum of squares, we do the same thing, but instead of calculating the mean for the total data set, we calculate a separate mean for each group. So here we've calculated a separate mean for group A, group B, and group C, and then we've subtracted the mean from each data point corresponding to each group. We've squared all the results and we've added all the results together. And that's given us the error sum of squares, which in this case is 134.77. So knowing this information, the number of groups, the sample size, the total sum of squares and the error sum of squares, we can now derive an ANOVA table. So we can use these data to construct an ANOVA table and test our null hypothesis which is that the mean of group A is equal to the mean of group B is equal to the mean of group C. If you use a computer to calculate an ANOVA table, some of the details might look a bit different. Sometimes you won't have the bottom row. Sometimes things are labeled slightly differently, but in general, the structure is gonna be basically the same. On the left-hand side, we have the things that are generating the variance. In this case, I've called them treatment, error, and then we have total. We then have the degrees of freedom. We then have the sums of squares. We then have something called the mean squares. We then have a column labeled F. And then finally, we have something labeled P. So let's just look at how we can fill these cells in, starting with the, deg with the degrees of freedom. First thing we can think about is the total degrees of freedom. In order to calculate the total sums of squares, we've calculated a single mean from our data. Because we've calculated a single mean, our degrees of freedom for the total sum of squares are going to be n minus 1. And if you remember how you calculate a variance, you remember that the variance is simply the total sum of squares divided by n minus 1. So in our case, n minus 1 is equal to 23, so we can fill that in. We can then fill in the treatment sum of squares, which is also easy for a single factor and over we know that the treatment sum of squares is equal to the number of levels in our factor, minus one. 
we have three levels in our factor a b and c three minus one is equal to two and then the error sum of squares is simply equal to the total sum of squares minus the treatment sum of squares so that's 21. we've already calculated the total sum of squares and we've calculated the error sum of squares so we can calculate the treatment sum of squares and the treatment sum of squares is 309.4 minus 134.8 so we can fill that slot in as well the treatment sum of squares is 174.6 now we have this column labeled ms which stands for mean squares and this is where we convert the sums of squares back into something that's much more comparable to a variance you'll remember that to calculate the variance of a data set we divide the sum of squares by the degrees of freedom so to calculate the error mean squares and the treatment mean squares, we just divide the sum of squares by the appropriate degrees of freedom. So for the treatment mean squares, that's 174.6 over 2, which is 87.3. And for the error sum of squares, we've got 134.8 divided by 21, which is 6.42. So this is now our actual partitioned variance. And what you can see is that the amount of variance in the data set that's a consequence of the differences between the means of the groups is a great deal bigger than the amount of variance that we remain unable to explain even when we've calculated the means for our groups. So the treatment variance, the treatment mean squares is 87 and the error variance, the error mean squares is 6.42. The prediction for an ANOVA is that the ratio of the mean squares to the the treatment mean squares to the error mean squares should be significantly greater than one so in order to calculate in order to calculate a p-value we have to calculate a test statistic and in the case of ANOVA the test statistic will be distributed on the f distribution and to calculate our value of f we simply divide the mean square treatment by the mean square error which gives us 13.6 the F distribution has two sets of degrees of freedom, in this case 2 and 21. So what we need to do now is find out how likely we are to get a value of 13.6 on an F distribution on 2 and 21 degrees of freedom, given the null hypothesis, which is that all of the means are equal to each other. I'm not going to do the calculation here, but we can ask R to do that for us, which I've done down here. And you can see that the probability of observing a value of f of 13.6 or greater on an f distribution with 2 and 21 degrees of freedom is equal to 0 0.000162. So that p-value is comfortably smaller than 0.05. So we've got a significant effect in our ANOVA and we can add that p-value to our ANOVA table. And that is now finished. We've now derived the entire ANOVA table from those values that we had earlier. Let's just go through this again and we'll remind ourselves of what it is that we use to generate each component of our ANOVA table. So for the degrees of freedom, the total degrees of freedom are n minus 1, the treatment degrees of freedom are k minus 1, where k is the number of levels in our factor, and the error degrees of freedom are just the total degrees of freedom minus the treatment degrees of freedom. For the sums of squares, we can calculate the error sum of squares if we know the total sum of squares and the treatment sum of squares, or we can calculate the treatment sum of squares if we know the total sum of squares and the error sum of squares. The mean squares are simply the sums of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. And then our F statistic is calculated as the mean square treatment divided by the mean square error. And then finally, once we know that F statistic, that test statistic, and we know our two degrees of freedom, we can calculate the probability of observing a value of F as big or bigger than the one we've got on an F distribution on the appropriate number of degrees of freedom. And we can fill in our P column with that value there. Of course, most of the time we don't calculate an ANOVA table by hand. Most of the time, we ask a computer to generate R and over tables for us. And if we put these data into R and ask R to do an ANOVA for us, this is the ANOVA table that it gives us. You can see 
that it's slightly different from the table that we generated in that R doesn't even bother to give you a row for the total sum of squares. Um, but the remainder of it is the same. R calls the error sum of squares the residual sum of squares. Um, instead of treatment, it says F2 because that's what I called the factor. But the remainder of the table is the same. And you can see that the numbers are all the same, give or take a few rounding errors. So how do we interpret this ANOVA? We've got a significant F statistic coming from our ANOVA table. What does that actually mean? Well, the null hypothesis for an ANOVA is that the means of all the groups in your factor are the same. So in this case, the mean of group A is equal to the mean of group B and also equal to the mean of group C. In other words, none of those means are different from any other means. When we have a statistically significant result in our ANOVA, what that tells us is that we can reject the null hypothesis. And if we reject the null hypothesis, that means that we accept the alternative hypothesis. And in this case, that means that at least one mean is significantly different from at least one other mean. The ANOVA doesn't tell us which means are different from which other means. We can get some insight into that by using something called the coefficients table, which we'll look at in another video. Uh, alternatively, if you really have to find that out, you can do something called a multiple comparisons test. Um, or you can just look at the effect sizes and look at the standard errors on those based on what's in the summary table and try and work it out for yourself. An alternative interpretation of that significant F statistic we've got is that the model we have where we fit a mean to each group explains significantly more of the variance in the data set than a model which just has a single mean calculated for all the data. That may sound a little bit weird, but when you get on to more complex linear model problems, that kind of interpretation becomes more useful and interpretations where you're just thinking about differences between specific pairs of means becomes less useful. Okay, thank you very much.